Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and are fair use and fair dealings. Heidi, hi, said I'd be back. So I didn't actually put up my Christmas tree. Um, reason being is I had a super busy weekend. Um, I started, I went into town, I got my dog's claws clipped. And then I was moving around summer clothes, winter clothes. I don't know what you guys are like, but I have several stages of clothes. So my husband's freaking out the fact that I've got like two boxes of summer clothes. Well, probably that's five boxes of summer clothes up there. Because I was like, no, I've got my fat summer clothes and I've got my thin summer clothes. And then I've got my just for holiday clothes. You know, the shorts that are a bit too short or that crazy colored dress that you wouldn't wear anywhere else. So he's been moaning, but he's gonna go up there tonight and get my tree down. And um, yeah, so we're gonna be doing it during the week. So you'll see a few little festive things go up as the videos go on during this week. I also finally painted my nails. Um, I used to get the gel done but after what happened with lockdown I got stuck with gel acrylic nails with no one to take them off so this time I went old school. I did them myself. They're not the best but at least they're done and they're a nice festive colour. So I'll tell you how my day started off today. Um, I got in my car getting ready to go to the gym and meet my personal trainer. Yes I said those words. I mean business now and I just thought I'd just quickly check Twitter because I've posted a few things in the morning and you know some sad guy had logged on to Twitter just to call me Miss Piggy. Yep that's literally it. He had sent no other tweets at that particular time. A guy, Miss Piggy. Now I'm presuming that he's going off of my profile picture which was still with me with blonde curly hair and obviously you know it's supposed to be an offensive term to people but for me as most people pointed out Miss Piggy is actually a massive compliment because Miss Piggy is sassy and she is an icon. So in a world full of sad Muppets like him, be a Miss Piggy. So let's get on with the video. We have had a really heartwarming story come up from the Duchess of Cambridge, well not directly from her but about her. She and William had been doing, which the newspapers have reported, they have been doing behind the scenes stuff, um, working, can't say the word, but the worldwide bug, helping charities, making phone calls, being on helplines and stuff. Now one of the friendships that has come from this is the Duchess of Cambridge and a gentleman called Len Gardner. Len is 85 and he was lonely and Catherine has done it through one of these, uh, I think it's the NHS, where they put you in contact with people and you make, can make phone calls. Um, they, if there's someone that you might know in your neighbourhood that might be a bit lonely over Christmas or because of the, you know, the bug, um, you, can, you can call them or the NHS can help pair you up with people in your area for anyone that has got some spare time. But Len, sadly, as well as being uh, very lonely, his wife has Alzheimer's and he also suffers from bladder cancer. So as well as being cut off from, you know, I'm presuming carers and family and everything else, it's been a very trying time for him. So he was very, very excited and he said that he really looked forward to speaking to the Duchess of Cambridge. Apparently she called him a couple of times. But what's sweeter about this is one of the conversations they had, she spoke to him about, you know, food, because she's obviously a foodie herself, and he spoke about his love for Italian food. So a few days after their last phone call, the Duchess of Cambridge sent him a pasta maker, followed by several large bags of the special pasta flour, and I just thought that was absolutely lovely. I don't know if it's called like some special pasta powder, I don't know what it's called, I don't bake. <laughs> I can cook stuff, but I wouldn't make my own pasta, sorry. But what a lovely heartwarming story. I love hearing stories like this, especially this time of year. And obviously it's the Duchess of Cambridge, so naturally I'm biased. So I found it odd, uh, the last week, several different media outlets have been you know they like to compare Catherine and Meghan all the time going oh well Catherine's taking influence from Meghan or blah 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 but what had come up was an old story saying Catherine still hasn't been awarded the same privilege that Meghan was and you're like okay log on to the story because you know it's clickbait and it was all to do with Meghan going on that train ride when the Queen fast-tracked her remember Meghan wasn't accepted by the royal family fast-tracked her into going on the royal train which Meghan didn't wear a hat despite being asked to and yes it's protocol it's the Queen and she also walked in front of her and uh, talked in front of her and yeah it was just generally a disaster I think she tried to get into the car before her it was just a bit of a nightmare it was Meghan not listening to her personal aides but it was weird that the newspapers were bringing this up and I was like, why are they digging up an old story like that? Turns out there was an embargo. William and Catherine had just announced that they are currently on a three-day tour on the Royal Train. 
They're going to be touring uh, various places over the UK, thanking frontline NHS workers. I've got some lovely pictures here. Catherine in a gorgeous green coat, Catherine in a gorgeous blue coat, just gorgeous Catherine, shall we call her. You can see her and William here. They're obviously speaking with lots of different staff and thanking them for all of the hard work that they do have done and continue to carry out. So obviously with this new, huge news that has come out, you know, they're on a three day royal tour, Catherine's on the royal train, the media must have been chomping at the bit to get that story out there, hence why they kept dropping all those hints about one thing Catherine's never done. But we knew, we all know that whenever there is anything to do with Catherine or William or Prince Charles, something huge, Camilla's domestic violence speech, that's twice Meghan has trod on her toes over that, Harry and Meghan will definitely announce something to try and steal the thunder, won't they? They did it when they were in the royal family and they are definitely not stopping now that they are out of the royal family. But this one, this even for me, takes a bit of the biscuit. Harry and Meghan have announced that they are going to start handing out awards as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on behalf of Archwell. Yes, they're made up charity that no one really still knows what exactly it's going to do, apart from take lots of donations from lots of, well, anonymous donors, shall we say. So firstly, before I get too involved in my rant, a Royal Strategic, a Twitter account that I follow, has pointed out um, words that left Harry's mouth not too long ago, if you remember. He took a swipe at William over the Earthshot Prize. And here he is saying, giving out prizes doesn't make any difference. Oh, I guess, unless that's them, huh? Harry, everything is documented, everything is on the internet. He's as bad as her, isn't he? There's so much bullshit that comes out their mouths, they cannot keep up with their own flow of bullshit. Now, another reason why this is not going down well is because, well, the Americans have their very own award system that's handed out by the president. And that is called the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Come over to the UK, our Queen, and this is what it's a swipe to, isn't it? It's more to do with our Queen, um, hands out honours twice a year. You could get an MBE, an OBE, a CBE, a knighthood, a damehood. Um, don't ask me what all of those initials stand for, you have to Google it for yourself. But basically, she does awards, you know, twice a year, or Charles hands them out, even William's handed them out, um, to, you know, recognise <laughs> some of them are handed out a bit too freely, in my opinion. But, you know, some of them are handed out for worthwhile people, people that have done a lot with charity, people that have done a lot in medical areas, in scientific fields, in, in, in preschool, in teachers, all sorts of different things, police officers, even normal pedestrians that might have actually helped a passerby or something. There are so many different worthwhile people that they do get awarded to. So one of the biggest concerns with Harry and Meghan uh, reasons why they were leaving is because they wanted to set up their own royal court. The request was even put in with the Queen. They wanted their own royal court. The Queen said no. Next minute Megs it happens. Come on Harry we're going. The Meghan didn't even hang around to say it. She just sent angry letters to the Queen telling her that she can use the word royal if she wants and she can basically be a duchess in America if she wants. She can. Let's just hope that the Queen remedies this soon. Yet here she is going to be handing out awards, achievement awards, for people in, presumably, America, and, um, and it's under the name of Archwell, the Duke and Duchess Awards. I mean, how, oh god, one minute they're saying they want to be like us, you know, they're just normal people, you know, they, they go clear out shops to go shop for a Christmas tree. No, they're doing charity work, they're handing out food to the homeless, they're, you know, Megan's picking up crayons off the floor and running around trying to find stray socks, pull the other one. And now they're making up their own awards to hand out to us plebs. Them trying to style themselves as royals in America and the king and queen of America or LA or whatever their end game really is or what they see themselves as. I'm pretty sure America fought a very famous war that they didn't want to have anything to do with the British monarchy. Harry is now officially all right. He might be the next monarch's son, but he's very, very low level uh, for Americans' interest in the royal family. And don't even get me started on the wife. You have now got a deal or no deal briefcase girl that has set up her own foundation, her own charity, and she's going to be handing out made up awards. You'd think that after Remembrance Day, and bearing in mind that they didn't want to be royals, they didn't want to do any of this stuff, Remembrance Sunday, they went to an American graveyard. These are American war dead and Harry stood there doing Remembrance Sunday which Americans do not celebrate wearing his British medals doing a nod like he was still a member of the royal family. It upset a lot of people that have family members buried there because well you just don't do that. You don't go to a graveyard and turn it into a PR photo opportunity. No other celebrities do that. It's certainly not something that's done even in the UK. Please don't think that we do things like that. I mean, all of the existing charities that these two could have teamed up with to raise money, raise awareness with, but 
But at the end of the day, it was about money. They wouldn't have got paid for that being members of the royal family. So what they've done is they've left going, we still want to do all of the things that we can cherry pick that we'd like, still calling ourselves royal, but you have to pay us for it. I mean, when you think about it, what achievements have these two ever really truly had off of their own merit? Harry, everything that he's achieved because he was born into royalty, Meghan, everything that she's achieved in the last couple of years is because she married into it. Previously to that, Harry got into Eton. It wasn't done on a scholarship or because he was so clever, it's done because his parents could pay a lot of money. Meghan going to Northwestern, it was because her dad paid the extortionate bills and the fees. She didn't get in there because she was so super smart or so super clever. The same as the sorority that she went into, which there is a horror story going around. I'll just fill you in if you haven't heard this. Just a quick pause and then I'll go back to what I was ranting about. But um, Meghan reportedly, when she was in this sorority, they do a hazing thing for new people that want to join it and one of the things that Megan did she and a few other girls like real mean girls they got a couple of the new pledges to glue their eyes shut not eyelash glue super glue apparently the girls ended up going to hospital that sorority got put in complete suspension for four years you can google that it's a lot of rich people remember a lot of rich people with money the records have been sealed it does make you go back to no one from Megan's sorority has ever said anything about her you think if you know friends of hers, girls she went to school with, you've had the odd person and they all say the same thing. She was so sweet, she was so kind, she's like the powdered sugar you get on donuts. <laughs> you know there's no genuine people going yeah I went to school with her, she was a bit of a laugh, she was this. It's all been manufactured PR stories that have come out from random people. So all those girls that are in a sorority, I mean who the hell does that? What sort of you know mean girl have you got to be to super glue someone's eyes shut? Those girls could have been blind for the rest of their lives but as I said this is speculation but I'm just throwing it out there but it was just something that came up and then Harry famously he got his teacher to cheat for him to get two A levels in geography and art I think it was the art I mean who the hell cheats in art and Harry went on to then get into Sandhurst he wouldn't have got into Sandhurst with those qualifications he got into Sandhurst which is officer training because of who his grandma is yet yeah, here they will be handing out awards to people that have actually achieved something in their lifetime but you know the awards are going to be the Duke and Duchess of Sussex on behalf of Archwell I mean as I said apart from the sicko fans who's going to actually want those bloody awards they don't mean diddly squat it's absolute insanity now if the Queen and William and Charles do not see what these two are going to do they only had to stick to the terms of Megxit for 12 months they didn't stick to it for two months they have progressively got worse they didn't tell the Queen about the Netflix deal I mean that's pretty big isn't it we're gonna be selling home videos and, and you know and actually selling our lives to the highest bidder but we're not gonna tell granny you know that all of the privileges and everything that they've still got because they are still HRH just because they're not using them doesn't mean that they don't get all of the special privileges that come with it do not be fooled they do not deserve to have that dukedom it's Harry's dukedom Megan doesn't actually have any titles but she's got it by marriage I'm sorry but the, I'm actually no I'm not sorry why do British people do that we all do it we go sorry no no I'm not sorry look at everything that Andrew's got away with over the years not just the recent stuff that got him in trouble he's been in trouble a lot of times over the years for the sort of people that he socializes with especially you know Middle Eastern there's rumors of arms deals there's rumors of all sorts of fingers in all sorts of pies he had all of that stuff going back on then he was never stopped until he was stopped Harry I think has got the same gene it's called the arrogant self-entitled up yourself pompous gene and luckily for Beatrice and Eugenie it seemed to have skipped them and jumped straight across to their cousin also resulting in lack of intelligence and no filter from brain to mouth every week we say oh I can't get any worse they can't do anything worse than this but yet they continue and they will continue to do so. And if the monarchy are seriously not going to take this dukedom, then they deserve to become a republic because of everything that's come to light with Andrew, with Harry and Meghan, all the dramas, all of the, you know, the extra spending. There's lots of unfortunate lights that are being shone on them at the moment. And it's not really putting them in a good picture. Whereas if they actually turn around and said, Harry and Meghan are officially nothing to do with the monarchy, cut them out, cut them off, let them go. Then I think that they would actually earn a lot of respect back. But at the moment, Charles is looking like a weak king and that's not really who you want to be replacing our queen. So we better hang on to our hats for the next few days of Catherine and William's tour of the UK because we know that we're gonna have a hell of a lot of stuff coming out of the Montecito Mansion of Madness because they're all mad there.
All jokes aside, they're not really getting the headlines that they wanted to. We know what they're up to. The media now know what they're up to. They just don't really cover them. Whilst this story did come out and it was briefly there, it got shoved right down to the bottom of a lot of newspapers. It's only if you Google it, the story comes up. It's gone from, oh no, God, that's awful. Why are they behaving like that? To, I can't believe they're behaving like that. To, you what? Are you serious? So I have to say, announcing the Taz Awards, the award for the most self-obsessed, ostentatious, overindulged, whiny, wokey, self-centered couple goes to da -da 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 -da. back soon. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please angry typists, you will be blocked to save your fingers the time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love Taz.